Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you today and a uh, good day to you all, be it in person or to those that are online. Um, as was just said, my name is Thilo Panzerbieter and I'm the chair of the German WASH Network. Um, and for those, for those who don't know that, um, just to let you know, the German WASH Network consists of 24 German-based NGOs working in the field of, of WASH, spanning humanitarian and development. And um, I am indeed thrilled to uh, have been invited today because I've heard many great things about uh, the Global Task Force for Cholera Control, and but I haven't been uh, truly in contact. And in the past days through my presentation for today and preparation for today and uh, listening in this morning, I was able to learn quite a bit. So um, thank you for that opportunity. I also want to, however, ask you for patience because perhaps I'm not perfectly up to speed on your current discussions. And uh, please do keep in mind that I'm uh, not an expert when it comes uh, to cholera. So just that as a disclaimer. That being said, I've been asked by the organizers to speak today about an initiative which I'm quite convinced has quite a bit of potential for overlap with uh, your respective work. And um, I should mention that I'm speaking to you also on behalf of these other co-leads. You see the logos here at the bottom, the Global Wash Cluster, Sanitation Water for All Partnership, um, UNICEF, and the German Wash Network. Um, but then there's also a whole other list of, of further partners that are behind this triple nexus um, initiative. So what would I like to present? First of all, what is the triple nexus? What is this triple nexus initiative? Some call it initiative 3.5, I'll explain that. What does that initiative do? Um, we'll look at some you know, touch points, touching points that I see in our respective work. And then I really look forward to an interactive discussion to jointly identify which elements of what I've said resonates with your work plan, because I understand your meeting. We're not focused on what we're doing, but on what you're doing. Um, and to see how we can work together. Yeah, how can we support each other and create synergies? So let's dive right in um, concerning the triple nexus. So for countries that are vulnerable um, to humanitarian crises, to climate change, and I think in many settings, which I think are also very prone to, to cholera outbreaks, um, the WASH triple nexus is an evidence-based collaborative approach um, which is essential if you're striving for resilient and um, sustainable WASH services. And experience has shown that in siloed approaches, which separate humanitarian and development interventions, <clears throat> a lot of times in certain situations, there's a tendency that, these will, that this approach will fail, the separate approaches. And from a humanitarian perspective, this result results in an either, even more overstretched humanitarian responses. And from the developmental perspective, um, in such crises, it yeah, just remains a challenge for maintaining progress towards the SDGs. The triple nexus approach recognizes that humanitarian development and peace outcomes are linked. Um, it's a co coherent, coordinated effort that can provide better uh, WASH outcomes by strengthening complementarity across humanitarian development and where needed, <clears throat> not always needed, of course, uh, peace actors drawing on the comparative strength of each. And this little graphic shows that the overlap between the three silos may of course be smaller or greater um, depending on the setting. The diagram obviously also uh, depicts the interconnectedness. And um, the arrow on the right, let's begin there, makes us aware of the interdependence of peace and development. The arrows at the bottom highlights the contribution that, that humanitarian assistance, which also strives to increase social cohesion, if it's, if it's done in a way that it strives to increase social cohesion in the host communities, for example, um, and, and how this increased social cohesion can then reduce yeah, certain risks of future crises. And finally, on the left, I think, probably most relevant for your discussions, I would say, um, the arrow depicting how development can build capacities and leads to risk reduction while humanitarian assistance builds crisis response capacity to enable development. When we look at the key principles that are 
held by humanitarian development and peace actors and place them on a spectrum um, between humanitarian and development, as we did in a recent workshop, and we see that there are many more shared principles than not. And these shared principles, such as leave no one behind, humanity, localization, do no harm, are a solid foundation for actors to find common ground. And where principles do not align, um, collaboration, of course, can be challenging, but we feel this needs to just be openly addressed, acknowledged, respected, um, and then I think it is manageable within Triple Nexus collaboration. Um, sorry, just one second. There we go. Um, when we look at the, um, da, 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 where was I here? So well-coordinated co collaboration um, basically should start as early as possible and it should develop over time as, as trust is built. Um, moving us from simple networking, information sharing to coordination, cooperation and towards higher integration of um, joint planning and resourcing. And central to the triple nexus collaboration are the key way, uh, are, the, are the new ways of working um, at the sector, at the service delivery and at the community level. An operational example, for example, uh, an operational example would be um, to develop um, an adaptive management approach that will allow flexibility to continue operation and financing in rapidly changing humanitarian environments. And a programmatic example would be um, applying risk-informed or conflict-sensitive approaches, joint assessment analysis, addressing multiple risks. Um, all of those are sort of at, at the core of the triple nexus. And I believe that particularly some of those risks are also cru crucial when it comes to um, cholera control, uh, humanitarian risk, fragility risk, water insecurity risk, climate risk, along those lines. So now that I've sort of outlined what the triple nexus is. Maybe I can explain what this initiative is that I've spoken about. Uh, about. Um, the German WASH network, for us, the struggle is sort of within our DNA. As I explained before, some of our membership is works in humanitarian, some works in development settings, some have a dual mandate. Um, and in Germany, in particular, we have uh, political responsibility and thereby also funding for the respective silos embedded in two different ministries. So the Federal Foreign Office for Humanitarian Assistance, BMZ for Development Work. And these different mandates and, and funding moda um, modalities, they, they cause a tension for the implementing organizations um, on either side or when transitioning from humanitarian to development or vice versa. So we were very interested in this issue. We, we've done work on that uh, for a longer time and with the support of our Federal Foreign Office, um, we were able to put on this meeting that you see here on the left. So in Geneva at UNHCR in December of 2019, we were proud that we actually brought together about 50% development and 50% humanitarian WASH actors um, together to, to discuss these, uh, these issues. And shortly afterwards, and this is where it's unfortunate that Mark Andre is not with us now because he, he could tell you more about sort of about the roadmap, but or intended to, um, that the humanitarian sector, WASH sector, they developed a roadmap 2020-2025. Um, um, and within this roadmap, there are a whole range of, um, of initiatives that are aligned according to, to certain pillars of action. And um, basically, we became embedded and anchored within initiative 3.5, as they call it, within the roadmap. Um, and for obvious reasons, we're not leaving it there only. We've recently had meetings to open it to a larger crowd because obviously our initiative is not about only, um, only the humanitarian sector, but, um, um, but beyond. So I, I, I would say one of the things of me presenting this to you, if anyone's interested, um, please be in touch. Um, as an initiative, then we went on to put on several um, global events always sort of in the spirit of our vision as this initiative of building resilient and sustainable wash services for all, always and everywhere. Um, 
Our main output, just to tell you where we're going now, our main output will be, as the headline says here, a joint operational framework that we're developing um, for the humanitarian development peace nexus. And to inform that um, piece of work, we have uh, done a whole range of key informant interviews, literature review. We've discussed these issues in humanitarian fora, so the Global Watch Cluster meeting and satellite events. We discussed it in development um, fora. And we have also recently put on some regional consultations. Um, here we actually got practitioners together to, to, to say how what does it mean for their project reality that was um, recently done in Eastern and Southern Africa. And they developed also policy recommendations that were then discussed um, with a high level um, roundtable discussion. So we had the World Bank involved, um, we had um, AMCAL involved, and now we're sort of with these partners leading the further um, development of this joint operational framework. Um, we'll have further regional consultations in the MENA and Asia regions. And, um, and one of the things I wanna to announce today is basically an invitation for those who are interested on also in, in review of this document, because um, I think in, in May, we'll, we'll wanna launch the first version of that. So um, this also in a way takes me sort of back full circle coming back to cholera now, because in the, in the first meeting um, in this, uh, in, in 2019, um, when I went back to look at some of the, those notes preparing for this meeting, cholera came up a lot of time, uh, a lot of times. It was a lot of times mentioned as sort of the, the, the potentially perfect case study um, for, for living the nexus. Um, several suggested choosing pilot countries to test and demonstrate the positive effects of a nexus sort of through a cholera lens. And, um, and in my preparation then for this meeting, I did stumble upon um, one case study. I won't go into detail, but oops. Um, but within the Water Under Fire report from UNICEF um, volume one on page 14, 15, um, you'll find an interesting case study of a multi-sectoral approach to eliminating cholera that was undertaken in Haiti. Maybe, maybe you know, sure that many of you are perhaps aware, but that's a very good example of linking humanitarian and development, um, where Haiti merged humanitarian response and development actions across different sectors at different levels of government, and um, looking at sort of their national plan for elimination of cholera. Um, I just saw very many also parallels to, you know, in these axes of, um, of obviously to the, to the work that you're doing, but also um, it, I think it resonates well or aligns well with um, the work that we're doing on the Nexus now. So with that being said, um, I've thought of a few questions that I would be, you know, interested to, to discuss with you um, and, these would basically be, you know, I'd be interested from your standpoint, how does what I presented now relate to the, to the three axes of the uh, GTFCC roadmap? Um, how can we perhaps even use the initiative that we're doing to highlight uh, cholera control? Um, how do you think we can align, work together? What, what are the potentials for, for synergies and collaboration that you see and, um, and as I said before, if anyone's interested to review the joint operational framework that we're developing, um, please put it in the chat or, um, yeah, or get in touch with us because I think that would be a great first step for us to align. So with that being said, I would just leave it at that. I'm not sure if Mark andre has been able to join now. If he has, perhaps he can add a few more insights on the roadmap. Otherwise, if you have questions, I can say a few things about it as well. But, um, but I think what I've outlined is a good starting point for our discussion. Thank you.